Robert II was the head of a family of 12. He's Scottish history's Paul Brune. And if you don't know who Paul Brune is, Paul Brune is the head of a fictional family of 11 called uh, the Brunes. They're a very famous comic book family here in Scotland. Uh, I suppose they're kind of like our Justice League, you know? Like, a, like if American kids grew up on stories of the Avengers fighting aliens in space using superpowers, well, like, here in Scotland, we grew up, in sto we grew up on stories of... Ma Brune's confrontation with her neighbour over whose turn it is to clean the stairs. Do you know what I mean? It's quality stuff. It really is top stuff. You should check it out, folks. Now, Robert II, he had five sons, all of whom were power hungry and all of whom had designs on the throne for themselves. The heir presumptive was his eldest son, John, but John had two daughters. And so in 1373, an elaborate act was passed in Scotland that would ensure a male succession to the throne because the last thing that we wanted in Scotland was a female ruler. Do you know what I mean? Like someone who could effectively communicate to the country and had a 99% approval rating. I don't think so. Am I right, lads? Anyway, in the end, John ended up having two sons. Uh, David and James who had gone to be James I of Scotland but it didn't stop his power hungry brothers trying to usurp power there was a lot of support for his younger brother Robert the Earl of Fife and for his younger brother still Alexander the Lord of Badenoch better known as the Wolf of Badenoch and if Gladiators has taught us anything is that Wolf is the most unpredictable of the bunch a Scotland in the 14th century, a big divide was opening up between Highland and Lowland Scotland. The English-speaking Lowlands was seen as civilised and cultured, whereas the Gallic Highlands was wild and out of control. It was run by Highland chieftains who would employ Catarans. These were private armies that they would use to impose their will on neighbouring clans. And Alexander is the king's lieutenant in the north of Scotland. It was his job to curtail the power of the Highland chieftains. But like every episode of Line of Duty that's ever been written, instead of imposing royal authority, instead what he did was he made himself the most powerful man in the north of Scotland uh, by employing his own Catarans. And Robert II, he was past his best, he was elderly, he had a debilitating eye condition, which, although he was still able to drive to Barnum Castle, it did make him a pretty ineffectual ruler. He was accused of not dealing with the Highland situation well at all, and with tensions running high with the English as well, it was decided in 1384 to hand royal authority to his eldest son, John. So Robert II, he was still king, but he just had nothing to do. They'd put him out on gardening leave, or garden party leave, I suppose. Now, John's power base was in the Lothians and the Borders. He had a powerful alliance with the Borders' most powerful family, the Douglases. And he himself was the constable of Edinburgh Castle, which made him one of the wealthiest men in the country because he could charge 18 quid every time someone wanted to come and visit him. And under John, raids in the north of England, they began to intensify. The most famous of which is the, the Battle of Otterburn, fought on the 19th of August, 1388. It's one of the most famous battles in medieval history. It's remembered for its incredible chivalrous set pieces. Uh, the leader of the Scots army is a, a guy called James Douglas, the Earl of Douglas. And he managed to snatch the silk pennant of his counterpart, Henry Percy, Hotspur Percy, they called him. And Percy, he was determined that his standard would never make it into Scotland. And so he chased down the Scots army and he caught up with them at Otterburn. And vicious hand-to-hand -hand fighting broke out in the middle of the night. They battled in the moonlight, uh, which is actually a top-loader B-side. Uh, it's an amazing battle that's, that's remembered for, for just a, being an incredibly brave battle fought on both sides. It's amazing, isn't it? Like a battle that was fought over a silk pennant, like it was an episode of fucking changing rooms, you know? Now anyway, Henry Hotspur Percy, living up to his name, uh, he lost the battle. But James Douglas, he was killed in the fighting, and that was a big loss for John because he had lost his most effective ally in the south of Scotland. In the same year, in 1388, John, he suffered a debilitating kick from horse uh, after he OD'd on ketamine. And so royal authority, it was handed to his younger brother, Robert, the Earl of Fife. But then in 1390, Robert II died. Now, despite the fact he had no royal authority, he was still very active into his elderly years. Um, just before his death, he'd completed a, a tour of the Northeast, for example. He was very, he was basically, he was old, he was fertile, and he continued to tour right into his elderly years. He's very much like Rod Stewart in that respect, you know.
And so John became king. But the name John was thought to be pretty unfortunate. It would mean that John would rule as John II, which would legitimise the rule of John Balliol and could open up a potential English claim to the throne. And so John ruled as Robert III. And the royal authority was given to his eldest son, David, the Duke of Rothsey. He had executive control and he was supported by a council of 21, which was heavily influenced by his uncle, who was now the Duke of Albany. And he was still very, very power hungry. David, he had to be very, very wary of his predatory uncle. Uh, you know, just like William and Harry had to be, I suppose. And... Robert, he made his move, Robert the Duke of Albany, he made his move in 1401 when he had David arrested at St Andrew's Castle. He had him locked up in Falkland and David died in March 1402 of hunger. Um, they'd Epstein the shit out of him, basically. Do you know what I mean? It was deemed that David had died of divine providence. Uh, but only, the, only the Tories could convince you that dying of hunger is perfectly normal. Do you know what I mean? And so Robert, the Duke of Albany, he was declared guardian of Scotland. And it meant that the heir of Scotland was now Robert III's youngest son, James, who was only seven years old. James was sent to St Andrews for his protection. And as we know, it's not a good idea to send a minor to Andrews for their protection. The supporters of Robert III, they took James as a figurehead in a disastrous raid of the Lothians. And he had to be rowed to the Bass Rock, which is a, a fortress in the Firth of Forth. And after a couple of months, he was picked up by a ship that was sailing from Leith to France and accidentally on purpose was then hijacked by Norfolk pirates. Uh, James would spend the next 18 years in captivity in England. And just a few weeks after his kidnap, Robert III died in, uh, in his castle in Rothsey. And uh, his dying wish, Robert III thought that he was one of the worst ever kings of Scotland. His dying wish was that he be buried in a midden. Um, so they did the next best thing and they buried him in Paisley. And so Robert, Duke of Albany, he ruled for the next 14 years unopposed until his death in 1420 at the age of 81. Uh, and I'll tell you all about the rule of his nephew, James I, next time. Thanks very much for listening. <laughs>